lovely welcome. And I want to thank all of you, especially for the conga line. I got a big <laughs> kick out of that. Um, first, I want to say thank you to Anne, because Anne was the one that actually said, you know, I think you ought to come speak here. And by the way, Kimberly is a line, Western line dancer, and you're looking for one. <laughs> so um, Anne was one of my coaching clients. And I had the privilege of watching her completely change her entire life right before my very eyes. And that's what we all ask as coaches, that students come and are really ready to make a move. She was ready. She was so ready. And, I, and we got, both got the memo today to wear red and black. That's some more kismet. <laughs> so... Today, you know, I asked the guides, um, what do you want me to do? And they said, Elise, we just want you to tell your story. I said, okay. Many times when I um, talk to groups, I do a lot of the technical stuff. And they said, no, we just want you to tell your story about your life and the things that you've been through and how it connects to your genetics. And so what I want to talk about today is, um, and uh, um, she alluded to it when she introduced me. She said, I think she's found her purpose because she's everywhere. I do a lot of different things, and I'm going to show you how that's tied in to my actual genetics and how you too can find a map for your life through Richard Rudd's Gene Keys. And so I'm going to give you the, the keys to the codes, okay? Um, I've been teaching spiritual workshops for well over 10 years. And I started with Tree of Life work and got very deep in that and um, uh, angelic work. I do a lot of work with the angels and ascended masters. And when I came to Sedona, it was to heal myself from massive brain trauma, which we'll talk about as part of my journey. But when I was a little girl, um, I had the ability to see the angels and Yeshua. And I call him Yeshua because that's his real Hebrew name. Uh, many of you know him as Jesus. Um, Yeshua would appear to me when I was very young. And as we grow older, that kind of diminishes as the, as the world takes more and more of your life and you're trained and conditioned to believe certain things. When I was seven years old, my parents weren't religious people. They did not go to any church or any, you know, religious activities whatsoever. And when I was seven years old, I decided um, I needed to go to church. And my parents looked at me cross-eyed. And <laughs> I said, you know, I want to go to church. So they, my dad said, okay, well, I'll drive you. So my mom would give me a dime for the collection plate. And my dad, and she would make sure that I had my white gloves and my white hat and my dad would drive me and drop me off. And he would always pick me up, of course. And so I was very um, called to spirit from a very young age. Um, and yet the world, I was in, I needed that because I was in for quite a few wallops as I grew older. Um, because that too was part of my genetics and part of my life path. Um, and I want to tell you this as a preface to how I got into Gene Keys and how I started understanding the correlation. Um, as I grew older, I got lost in the fringes. Um, when it came time for me to be baptized by the church, they asked, I was still a, a quite little girl, and they asked, well, did a deacon come see you and explain this? And I said, no. And they were shocked and mortified because I was about ready to go up there and be baptized and nobody had done the lesson, right? And I look back on that event now and smile thinking I probably could have told them more about that 
than they could ever have taught me. Because I was so pure-hearted at that point in time, I knew exactly what it meant. It just meant that I was giving my heart and surrendering to God. That's all I needed to know. And that, so they baptized me. And um, it was, uh, you know, one of those religious ceremonies, but it was very deeply spiritually uh, meaningful to me, even as a young little girl. Um, my father was a, a severe alcoholic. He died an alcoholic. My mother was an angry control freak. And she was angry, of course, because of the alcoholism and what she had to put up with. But the one thing my parents taught me and my um, four siblings is that we were loved. Through all of that dysfunction, isn't it crazy that as parents, dysfunctional as we may be, we can still teach our kids how much they're loved? And so I was very grateful to have the parents I had because in spite of everything, I knew I was very loved. Go figure. Um, I was a straight-A student. I always you know, wanted to achieve. I was driven to achieve and to succeed and be the best in the class. I had to be the perfect little girl. And of course, that catapulted me later in life um, to, ooh, Anne, I forgot to turn on my timer. <laughs> there we go. Um, that catapulted me into uh, serious dysfunction when I grew later in life and to becoming the control freak that my mother was, right? Because everything had to be perfect. And so um, that was a huge lesson in my life to surrender that control. And lo and behold, I'll show you how that was in my gene keys as the biggest challenge in my life to overcome, to find my higher self. So my genetic uh, chart in gene keys tells the story of my life, and it can for you as well. Um, the, the, my gift to the world that shows up in my genetics is to be dynamic and to show people how to achieve liberation, freedom from darkness. My life purpose was and is to understand the light and the dark and to be a warrior of light through surrender to the light and how to eventually learn how to transform and transmute darkness into light. So needless to say, with a life purpose like that, I was going to have a lot of really interesting experiences. Um, I understand what it means to overcome and to grow through pain and how to overcome trauma. I had a lot of it. Um, I dated and married all the wrong men. I made all the wrong choices, and I tell my clients, you know, the reason I'm a good coach is because I've done all the mistakes. You can't, you know, there's nothing you can do that I'm going to be surprised about, okay? Um, I selected very abusive men, and I was driven to be a mom, and somehow I thought that by being a mom, everything would be fine. Well, guess what? <laughs> that was another lesson in and of itself. I ended up having three girls. I had them six years apart. And um, they have taught me eons and are still teaching me every, every day. I lost one three years ago, and I lost a granddaughter four years ago. So I understand what it means to surrender to the divine and to let go of that kind of pain. Um, the biggest part of my story has to do with that kind of pain and the trauma that I had to experience and that I created by the choices I had made in my life. Um, and how I had, and how I was able to overcome it. The first was a very traumatic um, and life-changing event 
when I was beaten and raped and almost beaten to death by a partner and um, boyfriend. And that experience, of course, um, hit me right in the gut. I overcame it, I thought. But as we all know, biologically, those kinds of serious traumas go in and sometimes are very difficult to release. And um, I moved, I was living in uh, California at the time, and I moved to um, uh, Los Angeles. I mean, I was living in Washington at the time, and I, and I moved to California, to L.A. And about three months, started a whole new career, went on a whole new path, said, this is the new me, and I doubled over in pain and was admitted to the hospital where they said, your large intestine is not working. We have to remove it. And I said, I don't think so. Um, at the time, um, I was fortunate enough to be producing a radio show with access to every doctor in the world. And they were all natural and practical. Needless to say, I overcame my first near, second near death <laughs> with the colon um, going down by healing myself through natural means. And that meant healing and changing my life and opening to spirit. The rape was bad enough, but the trauma that I continued to carry in my gut as a result took me out biologically. And many people, you know, don't understand the correlation between our physical bodies and our spiritual, emotional, mental bodies. And I had done a good job emotionally of clearing, of mentally of clearing the trauma, but physically it was stuck. So I was fortunate enough to go to um, doctors who said, I can help. You got six months to live, kid, but I can help. And I worked for two years straight, taking natural herbs and doing all kinds of different things in my life. Like for the first time, I went to see um, a, a person who channeled. For the first time, I went to do past life regression. For the first time, I had all these firsts, right? And um, so my journey was quite profound. And lo and behold, I was led back into a woman who worked with angels. And I remember going right around my birthday time. And um, we did a, a journey into um, the Akashic Records. And in my journey into the Akashic Records, I was told one thing. She kept saying, ask the question, who am I? Who am I? So I kept asking spirit, who am I? And this funny little gremlin being that opened the door that led me into the library reached up and grabbed a book and laid this book out and went like this. And I walked around and looked at this book, and the message said, I am love. I am love. And I lost it. I totally lost it. I sobbed. For the first time in my life, I knew everybody else is love. But I didn't know me as love. And... It was a very profound, life-changing event for me. And I began going on a journey uh, to find my true self, my higher self, my authentic self. Um, it took me several years to heal my colon and to start on this journey. And it paid off. And I was working, I never missed a day of work, believe it or not, through all the illness and all of that, I never missed a day of work. 
I was thriving spiritually. I was thriving financially. Things were going well. And I stepped off my porch wrong in the backyard when I went to turn off the water. And I was going to fall. And I knew I was going to fall. And I did one of these. You're a dancer. You can do this. And knew how to land. Landed on my right buttocks. But it catapulted me back. And I slammed the back of my head on the concrete. And I was out cold, of course. My daughter, who was in the kitchen, saw me fall. My neighbor saw me fall. They called an ambulance immediately. And um, lo and behold, I actually know now that I died and came back in that moment. I had massive brain trauma on the back of the brain and the front of the brain because I hit my skull so hard that the brain bruised itself, slamming into the front of my skull. I had rotated my C1 45 degrees, and I was cutting off my carotid artery. And believe it or not, they didn't catch it in the hospital. They took the uh, x-rays from the wrong angle, and they didn't see that bone turned. So I went for over two months with my head basically off my body. And nothing um, properly coding from my brain to my body. I finally found a doctor, thank goodness, was led to one, who um, gave me the right prescription. And he said, you know, nothing's going past here. He said, there's no signal. He wired me all up. He said, you got no signal from here down. Go to an Atlas chiropractor. And they had this big, huge machine, and it took a month of them tapping that bone with air like 25 times, different visits, to get that bone to go back in place. It's quite, it's quite important, I guess, for our, for our heads to be on our body. <laughs> um, so... Uh, needless to say, healing the brain trauma was, was you know, I had uh, what they call boxer's head, where my whole life was like right here. I couldn't even have an MRI. I said, I can't. I'll kill somebody in there. You know, I'll tear this place up. You don't. They said, well, we'll sedate you. I said, no, you don't understand. <laughs> I can't go in there. So I did it without the MRI, and, um, but I, and I did it naturally and with spirit. But an interesting thing happened after the brain swelling went down. My dad, who had passed a number of years before, like about eight years before, started, I started hearing my dad. And I'm like, uh-oh, I'm cuckoo. That brain trauma went further than I thought. And then my grandma came in. And then the angels came back. And then Yeshua came in. And I'm like, okay, now, you know, this is what it used to be like when I was a kid. Except now I hear dead people. And that was, during, that was during the time when the Bruce Willis movie was out, the icy dead people. And I'm going, oh my gosh, I hear dead people. So all of these gifts started coming as a result of this brain trauma. I had lost the hearing in my right ear. Um, I have to wear two hearing aids now so that I can hear everything um, because it yanked the the um, nerve ending, and I'll never regain that. Um, but I still had some function. And that head injury was all part of the plan to open me up so that my gifts that I was given could finally open. And when I asked my guys, why did I lose my hearing? You know, they said, you were so right, you were so left-brained, you were so 
you know, organized and such a, a planner that we had to kind of temper that so that you could really kick into the right brain side and, and really understand and hear us clearly. And you never doubted it, did you? And I said, no, I didn't. I never doubted who was coming through, which is pretty astounding. And people asked me that. How do you know, as I started using those gifts, how do you know this is true? And I said, you know, I just know. I have no doubt of who I'm speaking with. So that was pretty cool. All these gifts opened up. So I went, well, this isn't half bad. Now i got to figure out how to use these things, right? So I traveled for years, 10 years. I traveled the world working with different masters. And I got deeply involved in um, Tree of Life. Um, but the angels said, no, we don't want you to go to the Kabbalah Center. We want, you to, we want to teach you because that's got some dirt in it. We want to teach you. So I learned directly from spirit, and I taught workshops in Tree of Life. And then I was turned on to um, this um, system called human design. Anybody know about human design here? It's, a, it's an interesting um, mapping of how the energy works in your body. And I studied that for 10 years. I bought all the stuff. And it's very useful to understand how you are designed, right? But it was so mental. I went, this is great, but it doesn't have any heart. And I'm all about the heart. And then one day, my guide said, look here, look here. And there was Richard Rudd and the Gene Keys. And the Gene Keys, this is the old book. <laughs> it's very old. I've, I've loaned out my new book to a student. But the Gene Keys book is, is the next iteration of human design that takes us into the heart and combines everything that exists into our genetic code. And it uses everything. It uses I Ching. It's based in I Ching. Astrology, tarot, um, all of the different religions um, on the good side, <laughs> the positive aspects of all religions. It takes everything, um, shamanism, it takes everything into account. And I did my chart with Gene Keys, and I went, oh, my God, this man knows me. He really knows me, right? And that was my experience, and so I started studying and became one of his first um, ambassadors. And Gene Keys is a... a um, let me get my timer going here again. It shut off. Um, Gene Keys is not a system like human design. And he is very clear about that. And he says, this is your personal journey. And he you're able to map out your, your own genetic code, which I'm going to give you how to do that so that you can map it out online. And it's a, basically a seven-year journey. It's a seven-year self-study. Now, teachers like me help you along the way. There's three different sequences of events in Gene Keys when you begin studying Gene Keys. The first sequence is the activation sequence, which is the four pillars. And that is the sequence where you learn how to break through into your authentic self, how to overcome that biggest challenge in your life. What was mine? Control, right? Control and lack of control, where I gave up my power right? After I crossed into the truth of that, I became very dynamic. And I used my dy dynamism to liberate people's darkest parts of their soul. And I found my life purpose. My life purpose then was to surrender so fully 
that I become a warrior of light and transmute darkness. So um, the, the Gene Keys chart looks like this. Every one of us has a unique chart. There are no two charts the same. Each one of these um, has a different meaning. And it is, a, it is basically a map of your life and your DNA code. And each one of these, like this is your life's work, this is your evolution, you cross over into your radiance, which is your gift to the world, and you find your life purpose. Each one of these has a shadow, because we all know we're, we're dualistic beings, right? So we have a shadow, we have a gift, which he calls your genius, and we have a city, which is your spiritual essence, and the essence of God coming through you. So each one of those circles has a different meaning and a different gene key attached, and it correlates to his book. Now, in my book, just to show you how it correlated, I became a wisdom teacher. Guess what my life work is? Wisdom. I told you that one of my biggest challenges in life was control and letting go of perfectionism. And then doing the opposite, surrendering so deeply to other people that I didn't stand up for myself, right? That was with the abusive men thing. That's my hardest thing, biggest challenge in life. Then I broke through to my radiance, being dynamic, helping people liberate their soul and find their gifts. And my life purpose, transmuting the darkness into light. And then I found out, well, these are, this is basically the line of indivi individuation, which is the core of my being, right? And I have two gene key eights, which is uncommon. The gene key eight is all about the arts. Well, guess what I do? I've had a th theater company for 33 years. And by the way, we're performing, so shameless plug. We'll be performing at the, uh, at the Sedona Pines Resort, November 5th and 6th. And it's an interactive show. You'll love it. It's a comedy. It's fun. And I play Marilyn Monroe in that show. So, <laughs> And it's all about her and the, the audience becomes the detectives, and they help Marilyn solve who's plotting to steal John F. Kennedy's coconut. I wrote it, of course, it's crazy. Um, but these two eights tell me, in my attractor field, what would I attract? Artists. Well, I married all musicians. In my, um, in my SQ, which is my heart, it's my passion for the arts. That is my passion. And not just the performing arts, but the spiritual arts, right? all of it, really embracing humanity where we are and loving it all and giving it back to people with humor and love and um, helping them liberate the darkness within them. Now, the only way I, you can do that is to liberate it within you. So I went through some pretty dark times. I had a lot of darkness and a lot of ancestral stuff and a lot of karma that I had to clear up. Thank goodness that path is pretty well done now. I've been working on it a lot of years. Doesn't make me an expert. It just makes me a continuous learner, which is what it takes to be a wisdom teacher. Just always be learning, right? So um, I'm here today to, to um, say, to teach you three things. And I wrote about them in my books. The first thing is, you're not a victim of life. You are not a victim of anything. Now, people will victimize you, 
but you are not a victim. You are a child of God that is pure light and love. And when you adopt that perspective of yourself, then you can forgive anybody and anything. The second thing is you're more than you ever dreamed possible. So much bigger. And your genetic chart will show you just who you are and your spiritual gifts. Each one of you is a genius. A genius. And that's in your everyday life. When you're in your highest self, you are God coming through to humanity. And that's your spiritual essence in its purity. And the path to your highest self is not about being the expert or the guru and getting followers. And it's not about being better than anyone. It's about recognizing your own darkness, transmuting it within yourself, and being more and more light. And that auric field will expand and change the world. How I respond to anything in my life is what matters. Yesterday, I had a client come in. I'm working at a hotel here locally, and I had a client come in, and this, this woman was, had been on a plane forever and was exhausted, and she was cranky, really cranky. And before I could even say much, she went, I'm not doing this. <laughs> I went, okay. Are you hungry? Yeah, tell me where I can get something to eat. So I did and sent her on her way. And I went, whoa, I got to clear the energy in the space now because <laughs> she like just, wow, turned out the lights. But how I responded to it was so much different than maybe how I would have responded to it 30 years ago, right? I understood and had compassion for her for having not slept and being cranky. Any, any, just those little things, how we respond rather than react. That's what makes us unique, and that's what shows love. Now, I'm going to tell you, got a pen? I'm going to tell you how to chart yourself, okay? And if you don't have a pen, then just remember this, um, this name, genekeys.com. That's not hard, right? G-E-N-E, -E, keys.com. And there is a title there that says free profile. You plug in your information, and you will get a full chart, including a description of you. And you'll go, oh, my God, this man knows me, <laughs> just like I did, right? Now, the trick with this is, again, this is a seven-year study, right? I've been doing it for seven, eight years now. So I've got it down, and I, I do teach it. Um, I was holding a uh, Gene Keys weekly class that was all about the Gene Key of the Week because we all have what's in the collective at the moment affects us. And so we would just study what Gene Key is happening this week. And it was always right on to what everybody was going through. And I'll probably, I took a sabbatical, and used to be in the group. I took a sabbatical because I've got so many irons in the fire right now, but I am going to bring that back. And so if you're interested, um, just ask Kimberly for my um, contact info, and I will be doing that again. And I just do a group, and it, everybody you know, donates 10 bucks. I have a nonprofit. So you just donate 10 bucks for the, for the teaching and the time, and we'll figure it out. Uh, I tried it online, but it really does work better in person. So I like doing it in person better. Um, so chart yourselves and then give me a call. And if you want to do a, se a session and learn about what that means, I can do a private with you. And just call me and I'll give you all the information. Um, I promised Anne that she was going to be able to read her poetry. 
So I'm going to turn it over to her. Um, I do have my two books back there. Feel free to take a peek. I have actually two more. They just were republished. One is called The Genetic Prescription, and it's about instead of the Yeshua Prescription. I wrote the Yeshua Prescription for the Christian community to try and open them up, but they just weren't ready. So I rewrote it the way that I know um, people can, the truth, genetic prescription. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That living, uh, number one is you're not a victim. Number two is you're bigger than you ever dreamed possible, and you're much more. And number three is the path to your highest self is your day-to-day -day life. It's not being an expert or a guru or leading a, a spiritual community. It's what you do minute by minute. Okay? Any other questions before I turn it over to Anne? Well, I want to thank you all for hearing me out, learning about me and how I overcame all of this crazy stuff. And if I can help you in any way overcome your crazy stuff, guess what? That's my gift. <laughs> okay? So thank you very much. <laughs>